Our correspondent Mark New joins us now from San Francisco with the latest on the investigation. Mark, can you sum up the main findings of the investigation so far? Um, the latest is that the NTSB will be, inter or should have actually interviewed the four pilots by now. That was according to the latest timetable they posted about 24 hours ago, but we're still waiting for them to make uh, details of that available. Um, this is an intensive and thorough effort. Um, there have been some passenger witness reports that say one of the chutes, the rescue chutes, may have opened up inside the plane, causing more chaos to an already difficult situation. Um, regarding the two Chinese teams that died, um, Deborah Herzman, the chairman of the NTSB, um, will not uh, comment on the, until the autopsy results are available, but she said that uh, they were located toward the rear of the aircraft, and again, this is the area that had the most significant structural damage, and a lot of other critical and serious injuries happened in that part. Um, the cockpit voice recruit, uh, recorder group is beginning to transcribe the recording. Um, this is very detailed. They've got to listen to the exact tape, have translators available, which is a combination of uh, Korean and English, and they've got to listen for the details of every single sound. Now, that information can then actually be made public, but eventually they will have a transcript of what is said. Uh, the reason is, is that is protected by law, um, as opposed to uh, what we might hear audio from the air traffic controller. That could be released, but that's up to the Federal Aviation Administration. Um, the number two engine was found adjacent to the fuselage, uh, evidence of high rotation at the time of the impact. Um, examinations of the engine indicate that they were both making power at the time of the impact. And also, she said that um, there were the comparisons before to the Heathrow London accidents where the 777 um, also um, had an accident, the, the previous accident, but she said that that's a completely different situation because they had severe weather conditions in that case. Back to you in the studio. Uh, Mark, some firefighters and police have talked about the rescue efforts just after the crash. Uh, tell us more about that. Uh, the first thing they, they talked about were the, the the possibility of the teen being hit by one of their um, fire rigs and they said actually that was brought up early on in the rescue operation by one of the uh, the people at the site uh, one of their team members saying that that was a possibility but they're investigating that further they don't have any information until the autopsy is done the NTSB also said that the um, uh, the surveillance cameras at the airport site could not confirm that happening yet so they're still waiting on the details um, they really had some harrowing tales of of going onto the plane, having to run up the rescue chutes. That was their only way in. Uh, overhead baggage uh, was, was blocking all the ways. They had to extricate young and old passengers. As they looked over, uh, the jet fuel was leaking at the same time. So you can imagine the stress they had to go through. And even one police officer joined in the effort, and he had no protection gear at all. And he ran in, and he checked the entire area, came back out, and then they asked him if it was okay, and he said, you know what, I'm going to go back in and check one more time. So incredibly heroic stories coming out of the rescue efforts. Back to you in the studio.